two of Simone's uh, appearance on this podcast, uh, simply because uh, energy moved uh, in a way to cut our conversation um, previously, and uh, we're continuing now after a couple of minutes of break. So welcome back, Simone. <laughs> Thank you. I um, really hope we wouldn't be interrupted anymore by any of the sudden appearances and hijacks of uh, our technical meeting. Um, look, uh, yeah, we were talking about how digital platforms helps uh, humans meet in real life and build connections offline. Um, I wonder what's your perspective of the future of how do you see we'll be using technology as humans um, to build projects together, to collaborate, maybe about maybe share a little bit about your experience working remotely versus working in person. What do you prefer for yourself? How would you like to develop your, I guess, like appearance and career, whether it has to be in person or can be online? Um, That's a lot of questions. Um, I think the whole... COVID really gave a jolt to yeah. online. I mean, if we, I'm in e-commerce, so our business was really transformed by those three years of COVID. And suddenly people had to learn how to work remotely. Yeah. Because before that, I can speak for the like German speaking regions, really you had to be in the office. Yeah, yeah. Like even if you had a commute that every day took you three hours, that was not a reason to do home office because the mindset was in early 2018, you can't do business, you can't work efficiently if you're not physically present in the office. Then COVID hit and well, suddenly it was possible to um, work remotely, like the IT infrastructure very quickly had to be um, updated and amended and teams, everyone got teams. And I started a new job yeah. right in that time remotely. Yes. So you can't walk around the company, you know, meet people. So I had to do it via teams, quite a novelty yeah, yeah, yeah. back then, but it worked. I mean, we got a massive project live remotely having lots of new people onboarded but there you had really the challenge how do you connect people to the team to the company and get them yeah have the feeling and while they're not there so we had lots of yeah virtual aperos coffees um god knows what uh, via teams yeah yeah <laughs> With the team, or with someone, or yeah, with, with someone the from the company, yeah, with the team. Mm -hmm. So everyone sitting at home, we're like, um, like when our go live was happening, the celebration was online, and we each right before the day we got a package with the gin, so we could all cheer with the gin. Good, good. Instead of in person, but I think now people are a lot more comfortable mm -hmm. working remotely. And bosses mostly have learned to trust their employees that they can perform even though when they're not sitting next to you. Yeah. And yeah. in the future, I mean, we read everything about the metaverse, for example, and virtual reality. I think it still has to be seen where it takes us. I think it will have a role to play in the future. Mm -hmm. when it's accessible to people. I mean, right now, I think it's in development. You're a bit more in that um, industry, more familiar than it's I like am. It's like more into gaming rather than like a professional development, even though there are projects yeah. that I are mean, based on teamwork. When they made the presentation, they had him like standing in this meeting room and virtually. Yeah. It remains to be seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it will, will not go away. So mm -hmm. I think for societies for economies to grow really good internet connections are super important yeah. and the technology and infrastructures mm -hmm. have to keep up to create these yeah, connections and profit streams 
Yeah, yeah. No, it definitely is happening. It's like I still believe that there will be a value of having like natural background, uh, no filters, uh, being natural with each other, reading each other is like non-verbal communications, not having like specifically avatars speak for me, but rather still me being on camera. Um, I think this is going to stay as an important thing. Maybe uh, uh, the newer generation will have a little bit of like anxiety to show their real faces and their real identity online. So that's something interesting to be um, discovered there. Yeah. It depends, I guess, on personality as well. Yeah, but, but you see, especially the, like you say, the younger generations like using all the Instagram and TikTok filters yeah. that make you look like a different person. Completely. And I think we are a bit older. Yeah. We can judge it but not always i yeah. mean everything i see on instagram i'm like oh I, I strive to that exactly even though somewhere in the mind i know it's not real and i read somewhere a while ago that also many like gender gen what are the z Z's. 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 yes um, they have a, they have another instagram account where it's really them and all real and not posts and filters so I think they start to understand mm -hmm. that how technology also has a negative side despite having also lots of benefits but I think humans have to use it correctly yeah to that question uh personally how did 2020 and this like move towards completely digital life um has affected you personally if you don't mind sharing certain things i remember we were in a car in switzerland you shared some aspects and i was like wow you didn't share with me before i didn't know you don't have to go like deep into it but i can't, i guess it affected everyone you know and i consider well, in like switzerland we were very lucky we never had a full lockdown okay Okay. We so were always able to go, go outside yeah. and go for a walk and yeah. go to the supermarket as the two of us. And I think that was extremely good because the countries around us, they had full lockdowns. I mean, they had yeah. to stay in their apartments. They weren't even, they had to show if they were outside, why they were outside. And I think that had lots of negative effects on mental health. Mm -hmm. Because I was, I mean, you know, you couldn't, my only joy in that time was going to the supermarket and finding some nice fancy food I can cook. Yeah. Because I was going <laughs> nuts in my apartment. I walked all over Zurich. Yeah. I walked 15,000 steps a day wow. when it was nice. And otherwise, like my mind, like suddenly I was also my in-between jobs in that time was March 2020. I left my job in yeah, February okay. 2020. I had all these trips planned. Oh. It was supposed to be a month of traveling. Yeah. Well, until today, I haven't been to most of these places. Oh, I had wow. Back then, so I was quite sad back then. And I had suddenly all this time on my hands. Yeah. And my now husband, he was home all the time as well. Working, though. So we luckily have a big apartment. So we actually can't complain. Because if someone needs their space, they get their space. Yeah, yeah. But suddenly you're around each other 24 seven with no chance to just go outside and see your friends, meet them somewhere because, well, it was winter and nothing is open. So what you're going to do? Yeah. So yeah, you had a lot of time and I filled it with cooking. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> and yeah. Then at some point when we were able to order takeout delivery, started ordering before that, all my time in Switzerland, I had never ordered food except for my, oh no, that's wrong. At the mm. very first night here in Switzerland, I ordered pizza. Celebrating. And then I decided to learn. To I see, because it was so pricey. <laughs> the pizza was like 28 $25. Yeah, yeah, it's intense. <laughs> And then actually during that time, I formed a habit, a good one that continues until today. Um, I started doing virtual workouts with a trainer. Oh, good. Because a friend, she had this trainer at the office always, and suddenly they came more and she was asking around if someone wants to join. I see. And back then I wasn't sporty really. And then I decided to join. 
by now this trainer has moved back to Australia, but we still have workouts every week. That's cool. Wow, I didn't know so that. That habit formed during the pandemic. I it's see. kept me sane, you know, like have some kind of day rhythm or a new, okay, Mondays and Fridays is the workout. Amazing. 7.30 in the morning. Very nice. And what kind of uh, workout is it? Is it like stretching or more like cardio? That's like body weight mm -hmm. workouts. Mm -hmm. and also with weights. And sometimes we use the um, exercise bands and she has music very loud. So yeah. You all can hear it. And she has us on a TV. So she can also correct our cool. posture. And that's quite important. Good. So she calls so she out your name. To these workouts. And it's the same group that's been like growing mm. together since March 2020. Oh, wow. Amazing. I'm now all over the world. I'm the only one that's still in Switzerland. Yeah. But yeah, we still do it. That's so super cool to know. I didn't know that part in you. And I remember you were one of the first people who would introduce me to Zumba in New York. Because you were going to Zumba <laughs> yes. all the time. And I was like, wait. I yes, I went all the time. <laughs> dancing. I never did it together, but I remember you were inspiring me no. to test it. No, I do it every now and then. Yeah. Someone. This has been great. As often as I would like. Okay. Part of a gym. Is this yours or mine? Nope. This is mine. I'm sorry, Simone. It's something, you know, with you and I, I feel like technology is like, yeah, Natalia is not not naughty enough with Simone. Let's do something. <laughs> it's like either <laughs> me just like them. misbehaving in your field and seeing, testing your boundaries or technology doing the thing for me. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> We'll oh, just good. continue. We'll just continue like nothing happened. Um, but no, like, look, I think, look, I see you as someone who is, um, you know, like my older sister, like my advisor, someone who is like sanity checking me all the time, who I can test some boundaries and see honest feedback from you. So I'm really grateful for your presence in my life. Even though, again, like after you left New York, we had less of like a deeper connection. And I also use like online spaces to meet people. I remember it was like Facebook groups and uh, meetups yep. to find a new kind of like environment of group and, and social life for myself. Um, so I'm really grateful that we stayed connected. You invited me to your wedding, which was my first wedding in a while. And it was so fun. It was in Prague. It, it was, was extremely so fun. fun. I mean... It was such a good time. Two days and then three days. Um, yeah, it was it a great was time. Fun. Everyone still talks about yeah. this wedding. And yeah. they're like, this was, it was, it was fancy. It was, it was so nice. Fancy. It was so but nice. everyone partied like crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was great. That's the vibe I was hoping for. And I was yeah. so happy that yeah. all these people from different walks of life yeah. came together. It was very surreal yeah. seeing everyone in the same space, Can but they were everyone getting along. Yeah. Totally. And celebrating us and our love and being there. I mean, people flew around the world. Yeah, yeah. Totally. To be there. And we, we waited for this wedding. So yeah, it was you had to, to happen postpone it. One. Yeah, yeah. And then no. already at the end of 2020, we had decided, I don't think this will be over yet. Exactly. Luckily, yeah. I, I foresaw early so exactly. all our things were still available you could still pl still plan it out it was such a beautiful location like one of the best locations you could have like that type of celebration there and the weather gods were with us the perfect. whole week before was shitty super super on sunday it yeah. was raining like pouring cats and dogs and saturday was beautiful blue sky yeah exactly thank you god everything you. went be god beautiful yeah super super beautiful ceremony in the church super nice like time uh in the courtyard there in the grass and it was like so good and then going to the park and that beautiful mm. like castle building basically in the park yes. Um, yeah, and like we had the presentation with all the women saying, Simone, happy wedding. Uh, it was so good. Uh, everything felt very magical, like overwhelmingly so. Um, I felt like it could be myself, the like crazy me, and I still felt like I was still part of the thing, uh, connected with some people. Uh, it was beautiful to see all yes, the old did. connections as well. 
Yeah, like I, I wish, you know, we had more of these kind of celebrations of life, whether it's connected to the wedding or connected to just coming back together. Um, you know, that's I, true. I, I see that I coming. Like we, we need to find the ways to come together again in physical and maybe like have a budget set for it to, to celebrate life. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a bit of a sad thing because yeah, people only come together for like weddings, now birth of children yeah yeah i always i always joke i mean the next time everyone will come together is when i die <laughs> no let's have some one day it's like the same one day <laughs> well someone has to organize it, yeah, yeah 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 no i get it like it's it's fine we can do it it's a business can... <laughs> i'm inspired now well okay so celebration me... of life event Celebration of life events, like or general, like celebrate a celebration of friendship of and community, life, of well being, of well being, yeah, like festival of of, and it doesn't have to be like an open event. It has to be. It can be like a closed friends only, yes. family only. Yeah, of course. Yeah, tell me about your interest in nutrition because we didn't touch on that, and I wanted to touch on that. Like in, interest in how like well being is connected to what you intake. How did you learn it for yourself? You said you love cooking, and I don't know, like in New York, if you're cooking a lot or not. Uh, how no, did you get into that? No, ask uh, our lovely Italian friend. I mean, I had salt and pepper, and I used the stove and the oven to store things. Yeah, classic story I of New York. I did not cook. I did not cook. My mother never cooked a day in her life. Oh, I think. wow. God bless her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here in Switzerland, like I said, food was really expensive. Yeah. And in New York, we went to all these nice restaurants. And then I started to slowly, you know, I made some very basic rice dishes, some veggies and soups. I got really good at cooking soups. And cool. when I invited people, they always commented, oh, you cook so nicely. And over time, I really expanded on my kitchen equipment for baking mm. or I got a wok pan and other kinds of fancy shit. Yeah. And there was a time, I mean, I was always kind of slim. I mean, never super slim, but good. And then at some point I had really like reached, I think it was 66 kilos in early 2019. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is it. Like, I get it. <laughs> I, and I also didn't feel so well because mm -hmm. I was eating yeah, mostly pasta, but lots of sweets, lots of sugar. And then I had read on a local newspaper about this company um, who focused on, you know, eat better, but not perfect. Okay. And really find a balance that works for you. Yeah. And I decided to work with them. And it was eight, nine weeks, I think. And the results were astonishing. I mean, I completely changed my diet. I started to eat mostly vegetables. I really looked where do my vegetables come from? Mm. What are the quantities I'm eating? Why am I eating? Am I eating because I'm actually hungry or because I was taught I have to have a breakfast? Exactly. But do I actually need this breakfast if I'm just clicking on a mouse? Maybe not. Yeah. And I really, I learned to listen to my body, like what, do I feel like eating? And if I don't want to eat, yeah, don't eat. If I don't want to finish the plate, don't finish it. Mm. And really focus on yeah, good ingredients, the right amounts, like mostly vegetables, some meat, but also meat substitutes like tofu or good fish. And then a little side of carb. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be the whole plate. And I lost in those nine weeks, I lost, what was it? Eight kilos? Well, yeah. And a lot of body fat and I was so proud, but it didn't feel like an effort because I was still allowed to eat my little chocolate or whatever makes me happy. The ice cream, the cake. Yeah. I love sweets, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and now that. and the last since then I did courses twice again with them okay. because I fell off the wagon. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. And then it slowly creeps back up again and you don't really notice. And then when my nice jeans didn't fit, then I was like, oh, damn it. Yeah. And I finished program again with them a week ago. And now, I mean, not that weight I was back then. I'm not back to 57, but now I have muscles, I'm training, 
and I learned how to eat correctly because I had to learn the hard way. Now I work out. Mm -hmm. Well, the body needs some carbs. It needs something to grow the muscles. You can't just not eat yeah. or only eat vegetables. Like you have to give it the right pieces so it can work together. Yeah. And that course, and, is it like educational yeah. course or it's like more of like a um, uh, peer-to-peer uh, support on eating right? No, it's like a, you have a certified nutrition coach oh, nice. via yeah. WhatsApp. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you send him or her the pictures of what you're eating and how you're feeling. And you have also a program on a website that's online. So you know what kind of foods in which week you should be eating or you should be avoiding. And they have a collection of recipes for inspiration. Got it. Yeah, nice. The coach works with you if you say, I, I don't like something. And then they work with you to find something that you like, that works for you, that doesn't feel like an effort because the coach really focuses on the sustainability of the program. Because that's, I think, where most you know, our own health projects fail because we want too much and it's not sustainable. I mean, just speaking for myself, if you tell me you can never eat chocolate again, I would cry. Yeah, yeah. And life is beautiful so mm. things are there to be enjoyed but responsibly yeah yeah true yeah reaching that balance how do you manage your the balance own, yeah. how do you manage your own um nutrition choices with your husband's uh, nutrition choices and how do you like come to a consensus uh, on what to eat daily uh, he's actually um quite a health nut as well mm. he eats very healthy and i mean he's very tall he's like 193 tall guy. he's very slim yeah. he's very muscular so in his genes he has quite an advantage yeah to me. but he he eats like the way i eat just a bit more okay like i'm the one you know cooking and he likes the stuff that i eat so it's not an adjustment for him cool. i'm nice. not forcing him to eat a certain way he likes it Nice. And so you're the chef. More of some things, like he gets some more beans, or he eats more of the couscous, a bit more of the rice. Or when we share a dessert, it's like he gets sixty percent of it. I get forty. That's cool. That's cool. You get your share still. It's just you don't. Yeah, need so it I much. can still enjoy it. I mean, often he also takes things um, because he knows. Also, I would like to have a bite. Um, but we are very, like I'm saying, it helps when you're really aligned in your taste. Yeah, for sure. Like if you're yeah. not, then it might be a bit more difficult. Yeah. Because in our household, I'm the one who makes a shopping list. I have the recipes, and he doesn't really question it. That's and he's like, choice. whatever comes out of it will be wonderful. Cool. That's good. And he just eats a bit more, and he also works out a lot. But he doesn't eat sweets in front of me. Not in front of you. But I can't. <laughs> Secretly. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I think when I go to bed in the evening, he oh, yeah. has a little bit. Yeah, because he doesn't want me to feel jealous oh, or no. <laughs> get tempted yeah. to break my goals. personal diet. Yeah, yes, I see. That's such a because good when answer. I see it, I'm like, oh, maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, but nah, but he's very good at that. He's very supportive. It really helps. He's been always so supportive. How's your relationship developing? Anything, any, any clues, any... Any help uh, in terms of like how to build a healthy relationship with your loved one in the way that it's not annoying to each other, how to communicate, like anything that you learned that you'd like to share that worked mm. for you? I think open communication yeah. is very important. Sure. And to like when you don't agree with something, not to be like you did wrong, you did, you, like always to be like I, I you, I say you do, I don't know um you leave the trash there uh, when i see the trash still there it makes me feel like this and this and this is why it bothers me like to really foster your understanding from your point of view why does it bother you without blaming i think that's important really foster an understanding and where you're coming from and why you have a problem with it and a calm conversation. I mean, me and my husband, we, we very rarely fight. 
And if we fight, it's like a reasonable argument. <laughs> okay. Like we don't get loud, but it's like, I've told you three times, I want you to do X and Z. And I, this is the reason why I would like you to do this because it makes me feel anxious mm -hmm. when you don't. Mm -hmm. And then if he's a good husband, he'll understand. Yeah where you're coming from and then you can have an open discussion about it and see how you can change behavior, how you can adapt. And I also think you cannot like, change a personality of someone. Like my husband is by nature a bit messy. I am super orderly. I'm on the other extreme, mm -hmm. almost OCD, but not quite. Mm -hmm. And I always say everything has a place. Yeah. Everything has a place. True. And when he sometimes leaves things in other places, I'm like, that's not its place. Yeah. This is wrong. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and then he keeps it in check. But he also agrees that it's nicer when things are, you know, in order. In order, it. exactly. Yeah, it keeps the yeah. good energy I think of the communication house. is really important and mm -hmm. voicing things early on, like not letting it simmer. Because if you do that, then at some point it will explode, maybe yeah, yeah. in relation to something that wasn't important at all. And I mean, we dearly love each other, but it's important to give each other space. Like when you want to be alone, like say every Wednesday we watch a TV show together and then one Wednesday I don't feel like it. Mm. Well, you can say it just because we do it every Wednesday doesn't mean we have to do it if you want to do something else makes sense yeah do you that share? also requires that you know yourself like how you react and what like triggers you right yeah yeah again it comes back to details of how you are perceiving you know each other and yourself first yeah. um do you share friends uh, that right now or you have your personal set of friends that you see each other outside of now we have some friends that intersect mm, like good. we each have our separate groups of friends but you do. some of them intersect yeah yeah and like, do you yeah. have like a schedule of how often you see your friends personally outside of your relationship? No, mine is quite flexible. Yeah. Like it's like, I don't have like every week, like my husband, he goes to his board games every Tuesday evening. Yeah. That's every Tuesday he's there. Yeah. Unless there is something else upcoming also for our relationship. Yeah. Um, then of course that's the priority. That's how it should be. But with my friends, it's like rolling basis. I'm usually the one organized. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> yeah. Same with me. Everywhere. I mean, same with me. I'm the one organizing yeah. most of the time. That's why when I say like we're going to create a festival for our friends, I'll probably be organizing and it'll be like, hey, do you want to organize it with me so we can have like our friends come together as well and meet, you know, because I think my friends would really love yours. Those that I've, you know, yeah created or cultivated friendships with, I think you would really enjoy meeting them, especially now that I'm like back in Europe. That would be cool. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of opportunity to bring together our tribes. Uh, as you know, I have uh, considered Prague my home, which is quite close by to, you know, your old home and your new home. So I really look forward to developing a healthy relationship that doesn't have to do anything with work so much, oh. but have to do with yeah. like, good mental health, a good state of being, uh, you know, like uh, talking about state and like what does the state means? Like uh, to me, a state is not a country or like a state, you know, but it's like a state of being or where am I choosing to be and where is the place for me to be? Um, yeah, I'm grateful that we had a chance to share our ourselves uh, in this, uh, you know, environment in the digital format. Um, two episodes <laughs> in a row. Oh, That's quite well, expressive. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Like, thank you. Is there's anything else you'd like to say or maybe ask me um, as a last uh, last uh, parting words? Uh, you're welcome to share. Well, what can your uh, listeners and viewers hope for in the next episodes? You have an idea already. Oh wow, good question. Um, maybe it's about uh, still the well-being and uh, continuing to talk about like how we find balance in life, um, how we find balance between work and life and our relationships, uh, maybe some clues and some tips on how to create healthy uh, lifestyle choices, how to train ourselves to be better human, 
Um, maybe it's something to do with how to prepare ourselves to become mothers. If you'd like to talk about that, this is something to like an open topic because some of my friends become mothers. You're like, mm -mm. <laughs> okay. I don't see it for myself. Really? What? I didn't. I never asked you this no. question. I guess before. Wow. Okay. Hey, I, I mean, respect. It's not that I dislike kids, but okay, it's really stressful and it completely changes your life. It's true. I think. <laughs> To be a mother, you really have to live for it. You really, really have to want yeah. it. And I'm an only child. I never grew up. You like are. when I got older, I never babysitted or I never had kids around. I see, I see. So yeah. kids love me. Yeah. For whatever reason, they really <laughs> like, they smile and they see me. But I'm like, I thought at some point, you know, when I was in my early 30s, I thought it would come. This motherly instinct or desire to be a mom yeah yeah it hasn't come. okay got it yeah yeah that's it i get it i uh, see who knows i mean every i have friends who tell me yeah maybe by the time you hit 40 you change your tune yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but as of now i love traveling yeah 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 no i, <laughs> I love the independence <laughs> but I yeah. guess then I'd like to put it in the other way. Like I'd like to discuss with you in the future the leadership and how you develop yourself in the leadership role and how do you kind of like act as a mother to a group of people in a way that is not motherly and annoying, but rather an aspiring and a motherly in a nurturing, way. nurturing, teaching way. Yeah, nurturing, yeah. teaching, exactly. Because I do see you as a cool educator. I mean, that was your first job, right? Like if you think about yeah. it, like teaching is a thing yeah but adolescence not for kids right? yeah no but like grown-ups as well like I, I i notice in my life right now i'm more of like a mentor to a lot of people who are like 20 23 you know like at least 10 years uh younger than me that um I, there, I, I do feel the joy of speaking with like young young adults and 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 helping them kind of like disconnect with their like parents perspective on things and help them see like what else is possible um, maybe we can talk about also the future of wealth and uh, luxury, if this is something uh, we can feel that we can weight our opinions oh, on, mm. exchange, like, is the luxury going to be a thing in the future? How is it going to be or shifting? what is luxury? I what mean, is, exactly, yeah, because you, you, you live in the city or uh, rather in a country that is almost like radiates luxury, you know, it, it, without even, you know, n without even like being, um, like, Paris or something I don't know with like the ego of it like I think the the Switzerland has this 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 gentle feeling of approach of hey everything is luxury like it's just quality and kind of thinking mm -hmm. about that is, is is quite interesting for me because That's I'm a building a brand thing. like yeah. I'm building a brand with my presence and digital and building a brand with my physical presence as well with the way that I look and I think we all have a chance to you know build a brand of ours in a way and 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 uh, see if it's a luxury brand or a mass market brand and what's the difference yeah so that part yeah, yeah we'll okay. see we'll see what else comes up you know in our connection I think we will see each other in person a couple of times before the next recording because I'll also be so. in Art Basel if you'll be still there in July or in, in the end of June, I'll be in Art Basel. So I'll still stop by and maybe we can come together at this point because I know that's last oh, time I know I was if I'm still unemployed. <laughs> no, but we'll see what's how things will shift, you know, because I feel, you know, it's shifting for better. That's all I know. Every time the big shifts are happening and now life is shifting for better. Like there's universe has something much more interesting for us prepared. that's a good direction yeah 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 yeah. and like sometimes we cannot like leave a certain place until it kicks us out and inspires us to take the strength um collect the strength to move forward into a direction that we are more um in, in interested in uh, you know in in the end of the day so yeah super grateful for our friendship simone thanks for our time together likewise tonight. spans um, continents and countries yeah thanks yes. for having me See you.